Our wisdom story today is background for what Rob Spurko will be sharing with us here in a little while. In the Hebrew Bible, in the book of 1 Samuel, to be precise, there's quite a story. Hannah, I'll invite you to move to the next slide. The story is about a war, a battle between the Israelite people on one mountain or hill, it is sometimes translated as, and the Philistines across the way encamped on another mountain or hill. The Philistines though have something that the Israelites don't. They have this giant named Goliath. And in the message translation of the text, here is how the giant is described. A giant nearly 10 feet tall stepped out from the Philistine line into the open. Goliath from Gath. He had a bronze helmet on his head and was dressed in armor, 126 pounds of it. He wore bronze shin guards and carried a bronze sword. His spear was like a fence rail. The spear tip alone weighed over 15 pounds and his shield bearer walked ahead of him. As the story goes, Every day for 40 days, Goliath would come out into the valley and challenge the Israelites to send one soldier to fight him. Now, scholars have pointed out that when we read 40 days in biblical stories, we can be sure it is a sign, a symbol of an incredibly trying time. As Reverend, Reverend Jocelyn Spencer has written, this was a moment that tested even the most optimistic person's hopes. This was a moment that tried even the most patient person's endurance. This was a moment that eroded even the most resilient person's persistence. When we hear 40 days, we can be sure that this was a moment when the powers of the world seemed very, very strong. Perhaps a moment like now. So who should step into this moment, this challenge with the giant? If y'all know the story, and I bet many of you do, it is a very unlikely person, David. Still just a boy, really, spending his time out in the fields, tending and guarding his family's sheep with a slingshot, and occasionally running to bring provisions to the quote unquote real men on the front line. But he's the one who volunteers to face the giant. And though he tries on some armor, he realizes that he can't even walk wearing it. So he walks out into the valley, essentially unarmed and undefended. He takes only his slingshot and five smooth stones. The text doesn't say how big the stones are. They might be even as small as this river stone. And with that he overcomes the power of the giant. Hannah, can you move to the next slide, please? So it is this story of David and Goliath that is important background to understand the work and the words of James Luther Adams that I'm gonna summarize here briefly. Uh, as found in his really important essay, Guiding Essentials for a Free Faith. So James Luther Adams was one of the most influential social ethicists of the 20th century. He was a Unitarian minister, a professor, and someone who spent time studying in Germany just before the Second World War. 
So this essay, Guiding Principles for a Free Faith, contains his articulation of what he called the five smooth stones of liberal religion. The five smooth stones like the ones that David had in defeating Goliath. And it's kind of a compilation of his thinking and writing between 1939 and 1955. And I wanna be clear here that he uses the term liberal in a general way. He's not talking about a political party. He's not talking about you know, liberal economic policies. He says liberalism's general idea has been to promote liberation from tyranny, provincialism and arbitrariness and thus to contribute to the meaningful fulfillment of human existence. So here are the five smooth stones Adam says we have as a faith, as Unitarian Universalists, to draw upon as tools, tools to take down the giants we face in this age without other armor or weapons. So the first one, Hannah, thank you, is that revelation is continuous. There is always more to learn. The outcome of anything is never predetermined. Life evolves and truth was never finalized for all time in one book, one religion, one prophet, discovery, or philosophy. That's why we are often called a, quote, living tradition. And it is this continuous revelation that can feed our hope. The next slide, please, Hannah. The second smooth stone he talks about is the fact that all relations ought to be mutual and free, not coerced. We freely choose to enter into relationship with one another in our congregations and in our association. We grant others the same freedoms, rights, and responsibilities we expect for ourselves. And we center mutuality and consent for the creation of our communities. This is the work of love. The third smooth stone he writes is the moral obligation to work for a just and loving community. He says the community of justice and love is not an ethereal fellowship that is above the conflicts and turmoils of the world. Our values must have expression and here is justice. The next one, uh, I love this phrase from James Luther Adams. We deny the immaculate conception of virtue. What he means by that is that good things don't always just happen. We use our agency to make them happen. He says that we must think about the power of organization and the organization of power. Our faith must express itself in societal forms, educational, economic, social, and political. And that takes courage. And finally, he says that there are enough human and divine resources available for the achievement of meaningful change, which justifies the attitude of ultimate, if not immediate optimism. That is an affirmation of our faith found in the words originally from Unitarian Transcendentalist Theodore Parker when he said the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. It's the same kind of idea found uh, in the theological tradition of black women known as womanism when it affirms that it is possible to make a way out of no way. Ultimate but not immediate optimism leads us, can lead us to a sense of joy. So hope, love, justice, courage and joy. As we hear in a bit about the work of renewing our faith movement, 
the principles and the commitments that bind us together, I invite you to hold these words in mind. <laughs> 